This month on 219 West, a backlash against a proposed mosque in Brooklyn exposes lingering fears about security. To be or not to be, the fate of a lifeline for disabled passengers hangs in the balance with the possible termination of the B-51 bus. And don't try this at home or off the side of a building. These extreme sportsmen are giving Spider-Man a run for his money. Hello and welcome to this month's edition of 219 West, the monthly news magazine produced by students at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism for CUNY TV. I'm David Montalvo. And I'm Jessica Cordemanche. Also in this edition of 219 West, fresh fruits and vegetables for free. Amy Yancey finds an oasis in the midst of a fresh food desert in Harlem. We'll also meet a former subway conductor turned chess instructor who's helping kids get on board. One of the premier tourist attractions in New York City is Broadway and the Theater District. The Tony Awards are coming up in just a few days. They recognize achievement in live American theater, and every year, they award an honor of excellence to those outside of the regular categories. And this year's Tony Honor of Excellence goes to the NYPD. Both the Midtown North and the Midtown South precincts are being praised for their work in the theater district this year. The executive director of the Broadway League said the decision to honor the NYPD was made well before the May 1st attempted car bombing in Times Square. That incident refocused attention on terrorism and the threat it still poses to New Yorkers. The fear of terrorism is playing out in a controversy in the Sheep's Head Bay section of Brooklyn. Ash Jethra has been covering the story. Thank you. The community is split over plans to build a mosque and community center on Voorhees Avenue. To the growing Muslim community, it will be a place nearby to gather and worship. But many longtime residents worry that the mosque will become a place that fosters radical ideas, or worse. As a lifelong resident of Sheep's Head Bay, Community Board Chairperson Teresa Scavo has witnessed waves of new immigrants to this Brooklyn neighborhood since the 1950s. It's very close to my heart. I love the community. I love the diversity. Every house on the block, it's like little United Nations. And that's the way it should be. Sheepshead Bay is home to Italian, Russian, and Orthodox Jewish communities, as well as a number of Arab immigrants. Within the next few months, a mosque and community center is scheduled to be built to accommodate the area's growing Muslim population. But tensions over the planned mosque are running high, as I found out while interviewing Scavo. The Arab? Mm -hmm. Not what did he what did he say? Give me that camera. Not exactly a friend of yours, I can tell. Is it? Something disgusting that I probably wouldn't repeat. Scavo says that many longtime residents are simply distrustful of newcomers and feel they're losing control of the neighborhood they grew up in. Most of the Muslim population in Sheep's Head Bay are immigrants from Yemen, numbering nearly 500. For the devout, the nearest mosque is three miles away. How many trains do you have to take to get to the mosque? I have to take like two trains and a bus. And how long does that take you? Around two and a half hours. And how long will it take you to um, go to the mosque once it's built in Fortis Avenue? 20 minutes if I want. Residents who are against the construction of the planned mosque say they are worried about parking, noise, and traffic. But when pressed on the issue, many will tell you they have deeper concerns. You read the papers, we are living in an extremely difficult time, okay? And everyone has the right to pray. But it scares me when I hear that mosques are not being used as houses of prayer. Horton's younger sister and niece were working near the Twin Towers on 9-11. Both survived. I do live in a constant state of fear of the world we live in because I'm 53 and the world I grew up in and that my children grew up in is not the same world anymore. And you never know what's going to happen. Most of the mosque opponents insist they are not biased against Muslims, but some of their comments might suggest a different attitude. Listen to the comments of this resident recorded while setting up for an interview. Whatever you want, they'll come and bomb us later, but we, we're, we're not prejudiced, but we, I feel it's not a good thing. Joseph Lamondry is a native Brooklynite who has been living in Sheepshead Bay for 11 years. And it sounds like I'm, I'm racist, <clears throat> racial, racist. I guess I am. I, I'm, I'm, now I am because I'm here. There's a mosque coming over there, but 
Otherwise, I couldn't care. One lap, they're muscle of I couldn't care, but I care now because there's one right next door to me. It's not just residents who equate Muslims with terrorism. New York's former mayor, Ed Koch, was criticized widely for saying this about racial profiling in airports. Of course, uh, the vast majority of Muslims, there are a billion, four hundred uh, million, uh, are not terrorists, but there are hundreds of millions who are. They want to kill every Christian, every Jew, every Hindu who won't convert. Many New Yorkers were surprised by these comments because Ed Koch was seen as a supporter of Muslim communities during his time as mayor. Koch later apologized and says he supports the Sheep's Head Bay Mosque. And I oppose uh, efforts to keep uh, out of any community a particular uh, religious uh, house of worship, whether it uh, be a synagogue or a mosque or a church. And I take the same uh, position uh, here. Many of those protesting construction of the mosque say negative media coverage of Muslims, Islam, and what has taken place in some mosques informs their fears. Baypeople.org, a website representing people who oppose the mosque, states that the Muslim American Society, a group affiliated with the mosque, is known to be trying to establish an Islamic state in the United States. The leader of MAS has publicly denounced these claims as false. The Muslim American Society of New York declined to comment, expressing need to exercise caution in speaking to the press on a sensitive issue. Sheepshead Bay residents seem to echo Mayor Koch's sentiments, having no general objection to having a house of worship nearby. But their attitudes towards mosques in particular were largely negative, and they are worried about what will happen in the future as plans go forward to build the mosque. I don't know if they the, the people that are going to be involved with the Sheepshead Bay Community Center, are they going to be able to handle the hostility? No one, no one, no one in this area wants that thing over there. And I believe afterwards, when it's all said, there will be more problems. Forget it. If, if we want to keep everything peace, peaceful, don't put it there. We understand opponents of the mosque have been raising money through their website. How much have they raised and what do you think they plan to do with that money? David, the baypeople.org is a website that represents the people that are against the mosque. Uh, so far they've raised $8,000 and they have a goal of raising $30,000. Wow. Uh, with that money they hope to hire an attorney to fight the Department of Buildings um, approval of the construction. And tell me, I believe there's a flyer going around but neither side is open owning up to it. Could you explain a little more on that? Yeah, the flyer says uh, it seems to be on behalf of the people who would be attending the mosque. Mm -hmm. um, it says that they're peaceful and mostly opposed to terrorism. Obviously, that's frightening long-time residents. Mostly part. Yeah, it's frightening uh, the long-time residents uh, quite a bit. But Mr. Alui Ahmed, in a televised interview, uh, denied the claims that the flyer were on the behalf of um, his community and said that all of his congregants are against terrorism. And what was it like reporting on a story like that where you faced some hostility towards... <laughs> you know, you, yourself? Um, I was a little bit reluctant at first um, to approach those people, but when I, once I thought about it, the people that were yelling at things at me were the people that I wanted to chat with the most. So I went ahead and did it, um, and I'm glad that I got to interview those How people. How is it approaching them, though, since they're the ones being hostile towards you? Um, to be honest with you, I think once they knew that I wanted to talk with them, mm -hmm. uh, they were a little bit more receptive. I mean, I was So in they the wanted to share their story. Right. I mean, in the beginning I was in the car walking around a random person, mm -hmm. but once I approached them and said, you know, I'd like to talk to you about this, I think, you know, they opened up a bit. Uh, but I almost always got the question uh, as to what my citizenship was and whether or not I was a Muslim. Wow. Well, thank you so much for that yeah. great piece. Thank you very really much. appreciate it. That's this month's edition of 219 West from the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism. Thank you for watching us. I'm David Montalvo. And I'm Jessica Cordemanche. This summer, we'll be doing internships at different news organizations. Where are you going to be, David? Crane's New York Business. Very nice. Yeah. Margaret Teich? I'll be at Hearst Publications making videos. And Roshana Rapkins? I will be at Channel 13. And Jessica. And I will be at CNN. But don't worry, we'll all be right back here in the fall, and we hope that you'll find your way back to us. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our podcasts on iTunes. From all of us here at 219 West, have a great summer.